moving from uh, technology and big data issues to uh, e-governance and online democracy issues. And I have honor to ask uh, Ambassador Maria Leisner, who is Secretary General for the Community of Democracies, to have a stage. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy that you um, uh, invited me um, to this uh, very interesting seminar. I've learned so much. Yeah. Just a second. Oh, just Uh, I have learned very much uh, already, and um, uh, it is absolutely fascinating um, uh, for someone being born in the 1950s to uh, uh, understand that there is um, so much more that you can learn and do with democracy. Um, people are always surprised when I tell them that uh, my, my mother is absolutely crazy if she has one day or even a couple of hours without access to internet. <laughs> um, she needs internet, I need internet, my daughter needs internet. Every day, more people around the world use the internet and we apply it to political and community purposes. Whether we want it or not, um, politics and governance is going online all over the world. Uh, creating democracy revolutions such as the Arab Spring um, uh, with, uh, and also providing freedom uh, uh, activists and dissidents in non-free societies uh, with, uh, um, uh, with reliable information and access to news and also the moral support that you need in order to carry on your fight, uh, but also improving the tools for campaigning and lobbying and activism in mature democracies. This is, this is how we use the internet politically today. And regardless whether you have democracy in, the country, in your country or not, regardless whether it's mature or it's an emerging democracy, uh, we use ICT technology. Uh, and uh, it is multiplying our uh, uh, efficiency and, uh, and effect. When I was first uh, elected a member of parliament in 1985 in Sweden, um, I came into my office. Uh, we had these beautiful little nice offices and there was a non-electrical typewriter on my desk. And I <gasps> did like that, and then I asked very quickly for an electrical typewriter. Three years later, I had a computer, and we had computerized uh, the, um, the uh, parliament. And I became so much more efficient. Instead of maybe making one formal question to a minister or interpolation, I could do 10 and I could uh, communicate, uh, we could create caucus groups, we could spread information. It was absolutely amazing how much better a politician I became only through the computerization of the Swedish parliament. Uh, so um, uh, we live in an age characterized by a multiplicity of uh, channels of communication. But today, uh, we can also see that people feel uh, disconnected, uh, they feel cut off from public life. There are indeed more ways than ever to speak, uh, but still a widespread feeling that people's voices are not being heard. So democracy does imply the involvement of the public, but the participation in the traditional institutions of democracy is declining. Uh, we can see the membership of political parties and youth organizations decreasing. Um, voter participation is embarrassingly low in a lot of countries. Um, print news media are fighting for the life. And um, um, in Europe, uh, we can see that there is a widespread and growing contempt for political office holders and uh, increasing disbelief in traditional democratic institutions. Now, the um, internet and ICT uh, tools uh, do provide means by which uh, citizens can have a direct role in shaping policies. I think that e-governance can help bring back the confidence in democratic structures and strengthen the bonds between citizens and the state, not only making politicians more efficient, but also um, bringing back confidence between uh, citizens and office holders uh, at a time where we absolutely crucially need it. So if um, e-governance was not invented uh, now, uh, we would have had to invent it 
to meet these democratic challenges. Um, the heart of e-democracy is perhaps not technology as much as, as it is democracy. Um, of course, online enhanced participatory democracy is our common destination. It is no longer a question whether we will have e-democracy. Digital communication is already the primary arena for the democratic dialogue. Of course, used, as President Elvis said earlier, uh, in both a positive and negative way by both democratic institutions and non-democratic actors. Uh, but regardless of ICT being used by Democrats and non-Democrats alike, e-governance is still taking democracy a step further. Um, the UN Millennium Declaration stated that um, uh, we need to promote a democratic and participatory governance based on the will of the people. Um, there are a number of goals that I believe the uh, use of ICTs can enhance in this respect. Uh, helping us to fulfill the Millennium Declaration. And I also have to say that um, I, I, I have been so disappointed in the Millennium Development Goals, concentrating only on the social and economic parts of the Millennium Declaration and not on these very far-sighted uh, uh, ambitions and high ambitions when it comes to democracy and, um, and uh, political and civil rights. Uh, first of all, um, uh, to uh, increase trust and accountability. Um, I'm sure that many of you are aware of surveys such as the Center for Excellence in Government made about 10 years ago uh, that uh, you, um, you can show that citizens who are exposed um, uh, to e-government are more likely to believe that government is effective at, at uh, solving problems. So e-government does really increase um, uh, trust in, uh, in democracy. Uh, secondly, legitimacy and understanding. Um, and thirdly, cit citizen satisfaction and service, as many of you have stressed. Uh, then also the uh, equitable access. It is not necessarily a problem whether a country is wired or not, because regardless of whether there are 5% or 50% of, of the population in the country online, still uh, there is always some form of, of e-governance, uh, uh, and particularly perhaps um, in less developed countries, uh, this space is used by non-governmental organizations and media and uh, academic institutions in order to, to improve their interaction and, and through them, uh, citizens are also uh, increasingly able to participate in the democratic dialogue. Of course, um, the um, effective representation and decision making is my, my fifth point. Uh, citizens will engage their representatives in governance when they feel that they have a stake in the political outcome, uh, if they think their voices will be heard, and whether they feel that their input actually matters. Um, it is with the examples that we have heard today, it is absolutely obvious that more and more people, and we can see this on, on the in huge uh, initiatives such as the AVAS, for example, and others much smaller that uh, uh, individual citizens uh, in a higher degree than probably ever before in our history have been able to influence uh, uh, the, um, uh, the future development of their country and indeed the world. Um, and then, um, uh, of course, the, the importance for, for um, using ICT for consultations and participation. Um, uh, and, uh, but then lastly, my seventh point would be that e-democracy does require e-deliberators. You need to have moderators, uh, people with experience and comfort with online public conversations, hosts that can create a structure uh, to, to make the exchange um, meaningful for those who take time uh, to participate. Um, and uh, there are many successful examples of this uh, type of government for us. I think that, um, especially having listened to what has been said today, uh, uh, it, is, it is clear that Estonia is um, a leader in the field and very distinguished leader in the field. Um, and Estonia has shown that the path towards e-democracy, first of all, must be a vision. You uh, have had a clear vision from the beginning, and this is what has made this possible. Many developed countries still do not have such a clear vision. 
can just look around among your closest neighbours. Um, it is obviously easier to introduce uh, e-democracy uh, where um, you are not burdened by previous heavy bureaucratic structures, but also where you do have historical or cultural basis um, um, in, 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 for a more active civil society, um, where there are expectations from the people that, that you actually have a right to have your voice heard. So I think the combination here in Estonia has, has been ideal. Um, you have had uh, effect. I'm incredibly impressed, of course, by um, all of the projects and uh, uh, the, um, um, uh, the examples that we've heard. Um, uh, Rwanda wanting to become the Estonia of Africa, for example, uh, and people in Myanmar um, uh, interested in uh, studying the uh, website of, um, um, of the e-governance academy. Now, you have had effect, and uh, perhaps if it is Estonia or if it's other initiatives as well, but uh, there are a number of initiatives pointing in the same direction, improving democracy through e-governance and e-democracy. At the UN level, we have uh, the uh, um, uh, e-government development database. Um, uh, there is the fairly new open government initiative, uh, which is a bottom-up initiative from initially just a few countries, and now they count 55 countries among those who have made concrete commitments, and there are mechanisms of following up, um, there are things that you need to, to do in order to, to uh, uh, qualify, etc. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, there is the e-governance academy here in Estonia. Uh, I think it was Patrick Griegord from Ericsson who said that uh, uh, there is an emerging platform here. Um, the community of democracies, and I know that I have to run because I have a meeting in a few minutes with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, but uh, let me just say very briefly, we are the only uh, meeting place for democratic countries. We're an intergovernmental organization uh, created 13 years ago by two far-sighted foreign ministers, Madeleine Albright from the US and uh, Bronislav Gelmek from Poland. Um, uh, and uh, 106 or 9 or whatever countries, uh, we, we have different counts here, actually uh, signed the Warsaw Declaration um, 13 years ago, which is still today the best declaration on what democracy is. We are a meeting place for democratic countries and ministers, and we make joint declarations. We also have a value-based caucus group in the United Nations, uh, and we have recently started to do joint actions for practical support for democratic development, including in some of the countries uh, we have listened to today, Tunisia and Moldova, where we have a couple of initiatives, both the LEND um, uh, project uh, that is hosted under the um, Community Democracies and also our task forces within the Democracy Challenge Partnership initiative. Um, I can see that there are very, very clear synergies here and um, um, with um, the idea of, uh, well, if you look at democracy, there is not one model of democracy. Uh, you, you can have a market to democracy saying that uh, now you would have to do this and this and this and that. I, I always say that even though there is not one model, there is just one set of shared democratic values. We do not compromise on the values, on the principles. The principles are there. Models look different. And also, there is no fixed goal. You can never uh, say that now we have arrived at democracy. There is no democracy station. But we're traveling on that train, and all of us are traveling, maybe in different um, uh, carriages, uh, some closer to, to the front and others more in the back. Uh, some of us do get off along the road. Um, uh, but, but we will actually never get there. Uh, but we know that we want to be on that train. So uh, that means that we constantly look for better ways to express our democratic principles, to have them reflected in our governance. We know that tomorrow's democracy will look different than today's. And yesterday's democracy, where slaves and women were not included, um, uh, uh, would not have been called democracy today. I wonder what they would say tomorrow about our democracy today. So there is a need for constant improvement. E-governance, this is where it comes in. And this is, this is why it is bringing us to the next step. I would love to participate um, uh, and for the community of democracies to participate in looking at this emerging platform 
uh, concerning um, um, uh, models for e-governance and perhaps also principles. And uh, uh, if this uh, conference uh, could start such a process, I think that it would be uh, extremely meaningful, uh, not only for bringing the bright and shining example of Estonia, um, even a number of more rounds uh, around the world, uh, but also um, uh, because I think that um, this is indeed uh, the next step where we need to bring democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Lesnar, for kind words and, um, and bright ideas. And I think the cooperation with the communi community of democrats, democrats is, is something that must be in, in pipeline of e-governance academy. Now we have a chance to have a short coffee break, 15 minutes, and when we continue, we have a very interesting presentation from Facebook. Elizabeth is here, and we will continue the discussion about the conversational century issues. So now, 15 minutes coffee break, and we will be back soon.